Have you ever wanted to make your own ergonomic handles for your crochet hooks? Me too, and that's what we're doing today. Hello, crochet friends. As someone with arthritis and a connective tissue disorder, my hands and wrists are a constant source of pain. I have to be very cautious so that I don't hurt myself when I'm crocheting. Recently, I started a project that required a three millimeter hook and I gotta tell you, my hand was cramping immediately trying to use that skinny little hook. Which reminded me that a while back, I purchased some silicone beads for this very purpose. So I went to my pile of craft supplies, dug out the silicone beads and got to work beading. And since I had all the stuff out, I figured I might as well go ahead and make a few more crochet hooks while I was at it. Now I am the proud owner of six skull themed silicone beaded crochet hooks. Quite a few people asked me how I made these hooks, so I figured that's what we could do today. I will show you how to make these silicone bead hook handles as well as three other methods that you can use to make your crochet hooks a little more comfortable to hold. If you like my hooks specifically and you'd like to get the same skull bead kit that I used, I will link it down below for you. I believe it was less than $15 on Amazon and I was able to make six handles. Plus I have beads remaining, so I feel like the kit is a really good value. Customizing your own crochet hooks can get pretty expensive, but it doesn't have to break the bank. I've seen quite a few methods of making your own ergonomic hooks that are super cheap. In fact, I was able to find supplies for three out of the four methods we're going to use today at Dollar Tree. Why spend a lot of money when you can have a more comfortable crochet hook handle for less than $3? So that's what we're going to do today. I am going to show you four different methods to make a more ergonomic, comfortable crochet hook handle for less than $15 each. Now that we know what we're doing and the setup's out of the way, I'm going to go grab my supplies and let's get started. that everyone is already aware of using a clay of some sort to customize your crochet hook handles. This one right here was made by my friend Nikki and sent to me in a crochet mystery bag. But we're not here to customize our hooks with this type of clay today. What kind of clay we are going to use is an air dry foam clay. Now I have used this to make my own hook handle in the past. I made this little guy right here. I took a bunch of the foam clay and I just globbed it onto my favorite hook at the time and squoze it, squeezed, squeezed it in my hand, <laughs> squeezed it in my hand until it was the size of my grip appropriately. And then I placed it aside and allowed it to dry. Air dry foam clay is all you're gonna need other than your crochet hook for this process. The texture on this stuff is really fun. <laughs> it's sealed up in a plastic bag inside of this plastic tub. Obviously if air gets to this, it is gonna dry out. And it's been a while since I've opened mine. I can see that there's a little space at the top where it actually has dried out, but down at the bottom, it's super squishy. So this little corner is like kind of not usable anymore. So I'll just pull that part off and set it aside and we will use the rest of this from the top. The second thing we're going to need is a crochet hook. Recently, I was in the need of a three millimeter crochet hook. And rather than just buying one off hook, I decided I would buy a cheap set of hooks that way I would have some backups and a couple of other sizes that I didn't really have on hand. So what we're gonna do is pull some of these cheapo hooks out of this set and use those to customize. Now, I think I'm gonna grab the five millimeter hook to use for our air dry foam clay. Got our crochet hook and we've got our clay and we are ready to start customizing. I'm just gonna grab a hunk of this clay off the top here that looks like about the right size. And as you can see, it's kind of um, it's kind of stringy when you pull on it and it has a really squish texture. It's pretty fun, honestly. So now we've got our crochet hook and we've got our air dry clay and we are ready to rock and roll. I'm going to place this around the base of the hook and then I'll wrap it around and we'll just kind of squish it. When I did this hook right here, I did not consider if I covered up the thumb rest on the hook, 
that I would not be able to see what the size of the hook was any longer. For this one, I'm going to try to not make that same mistake. I'm going to leave the five millimeter part uncovered a little bit so that I can see what size the hook is. Now you could always do other things like if you have some alphabet beads or number beads, you could embed one of those into the foam clay so that you could see. Um, you could try to stamp it or scrape it in there. I am just gonna go for the safest route and leave the size of the hook uncovered entirely. Foam clay is so easy to work with and this whole process is really, really simple. Basically, you just need to get a lump of your foam clay and wrap it around the base of your crochet hook. Once you've got it evenly spaced out the way that you want it to be, then you can just shape it however you like. You could just leave it as a kind of rounded lump around the base of your hook or you could kind of mold it to the shape of your hand like what I am doing. Essentially, I just got mine into an even spacing and then pressed my hand into it lightly so that it would be kind of molded to the shape of my hand. I was very careful throughout this process to not cover up the part of the thumb rest where the 5.0 measurement was on this hook so that this time I will not forget what size hook this is and I would say that while your hook is drying just make sure to check on it every day so that it doesn't become uh, slumped over or misshapen during the drying process. I'm going to put this one aside and hopefully it will be dry in a couple days. I remember this hook taking what felt like a week and a half to dry. It, it already feels like it's starting to harden up on the outside. So maybe, just maybe, it will only take like a day or two to dry. Next in our crochet hook customization journey, we are going to try using Beauty Blender sponges as our hook handles. These are two sponges that I purchased at Dollar Tree. So we've, we are 250 deep on this project. If you haven't seen this hack listed anywhere, essentially the idea is that you poke a hole in this blender sponge and then shove your crochet hook through the center of this guy and then that serves as your squishy handle. Now you could do this with just one. I bought two so that we could try like putting them back to back and seeing how that goes, seeing if it was comfortable. So of course, what we need next is a hook to customize. We'll open our kit back up and I am gonna grab the 4.5 millimeter, we'll go down a size and grab this little 4.5 millimeter as our next hook. The next step in this process is going to be poking a hole through the center of this beauty sponge. The crochet hook's not going to just go through there unless we pre-drill, I guess, a hole inside. I brought a few different implements for us to try in this process. I brought a bamboo skewer, which is pretty pointy, but I'm not sure if it's sturdy enough to make a hole. Then I've got two different size of knitting needles here. I don't knit, but I figured these would be useful tools to help hold amigurumi crochet projects together while I am sewing them. So I figure we'll try this smaller sized knitting needle. I want to add a note of safety here before we begin. Please make sure that if you are a young person that you have a parent or guardian supervising you if you're trying to do any of these projects involving sharp utensils. So what we're going to do is try to line up to the center of this sponge and then shove this knitting needle through. It does appear to be going through. It looks like I might be going at a slight angle though, so I'm going to try again. And it, it looks like the hole pretty much just kind of closed itself up, so this material is very forgiving. All right, so we can see that there is a hole going through this guy. The key now is going to be to get our crochet hook through that little hole. So I'm going to try just ramming this crochet hook in. Oh, it does seem to be working. Sweet. This is way easier. I thought this was going to be a lot harder.
Okay, sponge number two is free from its plastic prison. And we're gonna do the same thing. All right, you guys, that was super simple. I have no idea why in my brain this seemed like it was gonna be way harder than it is, but look, we have it. I suppose the real thing that we need to do to test this out is actually crochet something with this hook. I grabbed some yarn that was close and convenient. This is a Bernat Baby Softy. So we're just gonna form a slip knot and see how this is. This is definitely uh, bigger around than what I'm used to holding on my crochet hooks. So let's see how this performs. It feels a little distant, but I bet I could adjust to this. Well, I'm definitely able to crochet like this and I honestly am really enjoying this process. So I'd have to crochet a lot longer, longer <laughs> of a sample uh, to really get the feel for it. So I can go into a time-lapse mode here and make a little bit of a gauge swatch with this and then come back and let you know my thoughts when I am done. Well, I made a little swatch and I can say that this is really comfortable to hold. My tension actually works out really even with this as well. I feel a little bit awkward using it, but I do believe that that is just because I'm not used to holding something this large while I am crocheting. However, it is quite comfortable and I think that I'm gonna keep using this and keep seeing how it works for me. And this might be something that I end up doing to more of my hooks than just this one. Next, we're gonna be trying another affordable hook handle hack. And this one is another Dollar Tree product. I was able to find this reversible stretch tape at Dollar Tree. You may or may not be able to find it at your Dollar Tree. We believe it would be a bit more expensive if you had to go purchase it at Walgreens or a different drugstore or grocery store. If you're not familiar with this stuff, this is a self-sticking tape. So essentially it's like that stretchy tape that they put over your arm when you get blood taken when you go to the doctor's office. So this is what we're gonna use to wrap around the outside of our crochet hook. I bought two rolls with two different colors just in case one wasn't enough and we wanted some sort of variation. Of course, we have to select a crochet hook to do this to. So we'll just step down and go to the four millimeter hook for this one and try that out. I saw this hack a long time ago and I honestly cannot remember the name of the person who posted it. I will go and do a bunch of searching and hopefully I can find their name and put it on the screen. That way you can go and watch their original video. One of the things that they did was take paper towel or like toilet paper and then use that to wrap around your crochet hook to bulk it out and get it to the size that you want. And then they wrapped the self-sealing tape around that. So I figured that's what we could try. I just grabbed one segment of paper towel off of my paper towel roll but this might be too much. So what I think I'm gonna try to do is measure. Okay, I think if I just like rip this in half, maybe we can like wrap it up. I could use scissors and like actually be precise with this, but nope, I'm not gonna. Okay, so I've got kind of a triangular strip here. And I think what I'm gonna do is like place, place my hook on the little strip here and like wrap it around. I 
I don't know. That was conservative. I could go bigger. I was worried that it was going to turn out too bulky. <laughs> All right, so we've got some bulk here to help fill out the material in our hand. Now it's time to get taping. We're gonna cut just a length of this and see how that goes. I'm gonna put it in the same direction that I was using the, uh, pulling the tissue underneath it. That way it won't like unroll. It won't wanna unravel. Now this stuff is kind of stretchy, so you can just like stretch it out like this to uh, wrap it around and it sticks to itself. That was so easy. <laughs> And I've definitely got at least enough to do one more on my little roll of tape. Let's do a gauge swatch with this hook and see how it goes. We have a swatch. <laughs> I like this one too. Honestly, I think I like the beauty sponges a little bit better than this one. The, the texture on this one is a little more spongy and springy. I just don't like the feel of this tape and having to touch it all the time. It's a little less pleasant to me personally than the beauty sponges. Same as the beauty sponge hook, I will put this into the rotation of my hooks and try to use this one and see how it goes over time. And maybe we can come back and update on all of the different hook handles. Our fourth and final hook type that we are gonna do today is silicone beads. These have been all the rage on social media. So I decided to make my own and see how I liked it. And honestly, I like them a lot. They were pretty easy to customize. And one of the things I like about it is that you can change it out if you want to, if you don't use glue on your hooks. This hook is a 3.75 millimeter hook that I put my silicone beads onto. And I didn't use any glue on this one either. And this way, if I wanted to, I can just kind of twist and pull this skull bead off of the end. And then I could change all of these beads out if I wanted to, or you can just like twist and push this skull bead back onto the end of the hook and it is bam, right back in place. So like I said, I'm not using glue on mine, but you totally could use glue on yours if you want them to be more permanent. Let's pick out a crochet hook to customize with our silicone beads. So I guess we're just gonna keep going down the line here and we'll do a 3.5 millimeter hook, which will be pretty much similar size to the one I'm showing you here. Materials required for this project would include your crochet hook, silicone beads, and a bowl full of soapy water. I did manage to find some silicone beads at my local Dollar Tree. These were the only color options that they had available at my location. I don't know if there are other colors out there, but these are more on a pastel color scale. I did buy them so that we could show you that it is possible to do this with materials just purchased at Dollar Tree. You can purchase loads of different silicone beads on Amazon. I'll have a link down below to my Amazon page where I've already got a list going with different silicone beads that I thought were really cool, including the ones that I purchased to use on my hooks. In this bag, I've got the remnants of the original set of beads that I ordered of the purple, white, black, uh, and the skulls that has some geometric beads as well as round beads. I ordered a bit more additional white beads because I figured white would go with everything and be easy to use. I ran out of skulls, so I ordered just separately some skulls in a bunch of different colors. And because deep inside, I am just like a 12 year old child, I ordered glow in the dark. So I figured what we could do today is customize the hook with some of the glow in the dark beads and the colored skull beads that I just got in, as well as maybe some of the white or other like hexagonal geometric shape beads. 
Before we begin, I also want to address this with another warning and note of caution. So I don't know if any of you saw on Reddit or on social media, the girl who got her hand impaled by a crochet hook trying to put a chunky boy handle onto her hand or crochet hook. These crochet hooks are very pointy on the end. And while you wouldn't look at this and think that this would be able to pierce your skin under pressure, this could jam through your hand and that would be really painful and terrible. And I don't want that to happen to any of you. When you are putting the beads onto your crochet hook, do not place your hand in a spot where the hook could impale your hand. You want to be very careful to keep your palms away from the pointy ends of this crochet hook so that that does not happen to you. I'm going to show you the appropriate technique. I just want to make sure to stress in the beginning that you could sincerely hurt yourself depending on the size of the crochet hook you're trying to get these beads on and your method. This could stab you in the hand fly loose, hitch in the face. I really don't want anything bad to happen to any of you. Okay, I feel like that was enough warning. Let's proceed. As we can see on my prior examples, we can fit about four of the round beads and then one of these uh, geometric beads onto a hook with the skull bead on the end before we overlap the center here. And as I said before, my goal is to leave this part uncovered so that I can well, one use it as a thumb rest and then two be able to see what the gauge is on my different hooks because I know my ADHD self is going to forget. You want to be using a hard flat surface when you are pressing your beads into your crochet hook because you need something to press the crochet hook against that will give you leverage. And it might be helpful if you have like a gauge ruler or something like this, where it has some circles on it that you could use to press around the outside if you need more force. We've got our finger bowl of soapy water here. I recommend, this is about a quarter cup or so of water. I recommend to put the water in your dish and then put your soap in and then stir it around with your finger. That way you don't get a bunch of foamy bubbles at the top. That was how I did this and made it look like it's, it's just water. And next what we're going to do is pick out the beads that we want to use for our custom crochet hook. I think it would be fun to match the colors up. I think that would be maybe this like teal kind of minty green color. I do still have a couple of white geometric beads that I can use. So I'm gonna pull one of these out in case we wanna use that in the center. And now we're going to select some glow in the dark beads. We'll need about four. I wanna pick some colors that will look good with our uh, minty colored skull. I'm going to use one blue and one green and then like the blue and yellow mixes together. I think that'll be cute. I don't know. Should I use them all the same color? Oh my gosh. This becomes, welcome to Grace's indecisive about picking beads. We're going to just go with what I've got on the table right now, which is two kind of uh, neon green colored and then two of the bluish green mix. And then we've got our little skull to go with it. And we'll put our white chunky bead in the center. Now we're ready to actually start putting beads onto our crochet hook. So you may ask, how are we going to get this bead onto this crochet hook? Well, this is a smaller gauged hook. It's going to be pretty easy to get onto this one. If you have a larger sized crochet hook, it will be a little bit more challenging. And this is where you run more of a risk of pushing against it with your hand and injuring yourself. So again, a note of caution, but to give you an example of what we're going to do, um, we're going to use the soapy water as a lubricant to get our crochet hook and our bead together. What I'm going to do is dip the end of my crochet hook into my soapy water, and then I'm going to use the pointy bit in this to kind of drip the water right over the hole here. I don't want to get the whole bead super wet because I don't want to compromise my grip on the bead. I'm holding the hook so that it is on the outside of my palm. 
and I'm pointing the end of the hook into this bead. Okay. Now that I've worked this on the end, you can just turn it against a flat surface and twist. Twisting will make it easier to get your beads onto your hook. So we've got our little 3.5 millimeter and what we'll do is place a green bead and then the, the swirl bead and then our geometric bead and then the swirl bead and then the green bead and then this guy or maybe the reverse that yeah yeah that's what we'll do yeah same thing i'm going to take my crochet hook and put it in the soapy water if you look closely the hooks do kind of point a little bit on the bottom so that is helpful in this process and then i'm going to take the first bead that i want to have on my hook and i'm going to grab this guy and i'm going to find the hole of the bead and then I'm going to squeeze it like this and then get it on there. Now I like to hold the flat part here of the crochet hook to give myself some leverage. And then you can twist the bead to get it on more. And you can brute force it like this. Um, I don't have very much strength in my hands, so I try to avoid brute forcing things whenever possible. And if you're finding that there's too much resistance, then you can always take a little bit of soapy water and get that wet on the edge. And then it will twist a little bit easier. You can hear it's not squeaking any longer when I am twisting it. One of the reasons I like soapy water is that if you wash a silicone bead in soapy water, once it's dry, the outside becomes like sticky and, and tacky to where like it doesn't want to move from where it is in its position versus a lubricant, which is designed to be slick and stay slick. Um, so what I would recommend is using soapy water, which will be slick while it's wet then when it dries out, it will actually become tacky and then give an amount of resistance to the silicone beads, thus holding them in place better without glue. Same thing for this second bead. I'm just gonna go back in, get the end of my hook wet. It'll have a drip of water on it. And then I try to drip that little drip of water into the hole on my bead and then shove that bead onto my crochet hook. So same thing, we're just gonna do this for all of our beads. All right, so we're down to our final bead and you could Stick it so that the skull is facing down, stick it so that the skull is facing up, whichever direction you choose. As you can see, I chose with mine to put it with the skull facing this direction. And that's what I'm gonna do for this guy as well. With a hard surface underneath, I am going to like press down and just like squish my beads a little bit more. And I'm just pressing and twisting them like that. It's harder to do the ones closer to the grip without having um, a stable surface underneath. That way I can get the skull bead on a little bit further. And there we go. We have a glow in the dark customized hook. I can tell you from experience because I have a whole bunch of hooks like this that these hooks are great and I really enjoy using these hooks. My inner child is very excited about crocheting with a glow-in-the-dark hook. I did test the beads out to see how well they glow and they glow pretty darn well so I'm not sure. I doubt it's going to be enough to where it would like help you see your hook in the dark but it is enough that I think it's really cool. <laughs> it gets cool points from me. Isn't that enough? 
I hope you enjoyed watching me make these custom crochet hook handles and that it inspired you to make some of your own. While I am not able to have the air dry foam clay one here in my hand at this very moment because I am filming this on the same day that I made these, Hopefully I will be able to get some footage of that crochet hook and insert that in. I was definitely the most surprised by the Beauty Blender sponge hack and this one may just be my new favorite hook. I'm honestly super excited about glow in the dark beads. I might just end up changing out the beads on all my other skull handles to have some glow in the dark beads on there too because I mean why not? Are you going to try any of these ideas for yourself? Have you already done so? please drop a comment down below and let me know. I would love to hear your experiences. If you thought the video was helpful, maybe give it a like and a share and consider subscribing because I upload crochet videos like this as well as tutorials every other Wednesday and I love to make new crochet friends. Speaking of crochet friends, follow me on social media. I am Grayspace Creates on all platforms and I post daily. Thanks again for watching and happy crocheting.